Welcome back to Viewpoint. We're reporting on the ideas championed at the Pro-Life Movement's conference, which comes ahead of the abortion referendum in March. Stephanie Yeo of the movement's CareLink program outlined the work done by the charity with new mothers and vulnerable families locally. We, I think if we start watering down the value of life, it becomes a very slippery slope, which is what we have seen throughout Europe and everywhere else. I mean, we are seeing things like uh, assisted suicide, um, um, old people with dementia who have, you know, being put to death. We have seen babies being aborted um, mistakenly because there was a test which happened to be wrong. Um, and they found out the result of that after it was too late. I mean, I can't imagine the heartache for those families. Um, so we're here to help. Um, we're to help in difficult times. There are reasons that women go for abortions, and we are not blind to that. And I think one of the main actual reasons that is claimed um, from the statistics and that is that financial. Um, financial reasons, struggles in the home and, and things like that. And that is why I pride myself in being a part of CareLink, because if we think about it, as a society, we are a giving society. We're a loving society. The amount of donations I have had, prams, cots, um, bedding, food, um, clothing from all ages. Um, I think it's a sad situation when we might say, oh, well, I don't have an abortion or I wouldn't have an abortion because I'm financially sound and I have the backing of my family. But if someone doesn't, then they should have the right to have the abortion. Maybe instead of saying that, what we should say, if someone doesn't have the financial support, maybe we should help them with it. A lot of women, one of the main reasons women go in for abortion is because they say they didn't felt they have the support. Mm -hmm. And had they had that support, had they known that there was a backup there, that there was someone they could fall back on, that they wouldn't have gone through with it. Mm -hmm. It is not easy for women. Um, and it's something that many women have to live with throughout their whole lives. So CareLink is trying to plug or, or to, to provide some of that care, you think? Exactly. That's exactly what we're trying to do. And the fantastic thing about it is we're not reinventing the wheel. In the sense of CareLink and the babies, uh, we are more organised, and for the mothers and that, we are more organised now. But people have been doing this in Gibraltar, it just hasn't been out there. And in a way, this abortion debate is a good thing that it has brought this to the forefront. It has brought this to people's attention, that um, we need to be more coordinated. I mean, we deal with the babies, the mothers, the needs um, in baby stuff like that. We're not the only charity, and this isn't something we have just started up. I mean, I, we deal and coordinate with other charities as the open hands that deal with food, St Vincent de Paul's, there's Hope Charity. There are people who have been doing this in their own personal esteem as well, um, private citizens. So we are a giving society and there are a lot of charities out there willing to help. And it's amazing to see the diversity of the people that come and want to help and that are, are wanting and seeing the importance in this and in what we are doing. So mothers, and it will take time, um, especially when they're told that we're against them and we're judging them and we're not. It's not about judging. Even if they've had abortions, I don't care. If a woman has a need, she does not need to go and end the child, the, her child's life. There is help out here. And I don't care what she's done, I don't care what's happened in her life, and so we are here to help. Yeah. We are here to give everything that we can. Um, if we don't have it, that is what money is, is donated to CareLink for, yeah. um, so that we can get it. I mean, so, we've been given new cots, a mimosa um, basket. Um, people are very, very generous in Gibraltar. Okay. Um, so, uh, to be clear, the monies that are that are uh, raised for CareLink are, are monies that are uh, put aside and sep kept separate for the specific purpose of the charitable of work, the charitable separate to the any campaigning which is going to happen the in the The campaigning and CareLink are two completely different things. CareLink started before this kind of like really got on, on a roll mm -hmm. um, and the monies are, that are given for CareLink. I mean, if anyone comes up to and says, I want to donate this and I want this to go to the campaign, it mm -hmm. goes to the campaign. I want to donate it to CareLink, it goes to mm -hmm. CareLink. Um, and obviously all of those are accounted for and, and looked at because it is important that people, they want to give in different ways for different reasons. Mm -hmm. and and that we, you know, honour that and respect mm -hmm. that. Stephanie Yeo of the Pro-Life Movement's CareLink programme. 
Well, for her part, Geraldine Finlayson spoke at the conference on behalf of the charity Hope, which provides support for women who suffered miscarriages, had premature births or stillbirths. Professor Finlayson said the people she deals with talk about their pregnancies as much more than just biological states. People who have gone through a miscarriage or a stillbirth or a premature birth. People who, even if they were relieved that the pregnancy did not proceed, have been grieving the death of their child. These people have no difficulty in acknowledging their child's humanity and they know that their loss is not the loss of a clump of cells. Those people whose babies have been born too soon and who have suffered so much anguish as they have watched their children struggle to hold on to life and in some dreadfully sad cases have had to watch their children lose that struggle. Those are the people that come to us and who may not realize it but they have undoubtedly acknowledged the fact that those embryos were so very human and whose short lives have had far-reaching effects. That kind of heartbreak cannot be over a clump of cells. That intense knowledge that their child has not survived is, for me at least, an undeniable assertion on their part that their pregnancy was much more than just a biological state. We help anyone who comes to us. We're not there to provide any kind of judgment, but to support someone who is desperately trying to deal with the grief of having lost a child.